So this is a video on how to get your data from Excel um, into SPSS. So if you use SurveyMonkey for your survey or you create an Excel spreadsheet for it, it'll look a lot like this, right? I've actually already deleted a few rows of really random stuff like ISP information and the date the person took the survey, stuff I'm really not interested in. And so what you need to do before you put it into SPSS is you need to clean up your data. This is called the data cleaning process. Um, and there's a couple of things that you need to be attended to while you do this. So I'm going to go through them one by one. Um, the first thing is you need to delete all inappropriate cases. Um, so it's okay if someone didn't fill out some of the survey or they stopped taking it halfway through, but you want to delete someone who doesn't actually fit the profile um, of your group. So for example, this survey was only about active members on a roller derby team. And so SurveyMonkey automatically codes the first response, which was yes, as a one. And the second response, which was no, as a two. And so these are people, this is a person who's not an active member of a roller derby team. So they didn't actually like take the rest of the survey, right? We want to delete them. Um, and you shouldn't just do this willy-nilly, right? It should be individuals who don't fit the criteria. Or sometimes with a web survey, you'll find people who didn't um, aren't from the right city or state that you're interested in. Or you could tell they filled it out in a joking way. Um, they include, um, like maybe when they ask what city do you roll, do you live in, they put Mars, right? So you know that they're kind of being kind of jokesters. So you want to go through and be like, okay, everyone who answered it too. I mean, they didn't fill out the rest of the survey anyway. They don't fit the criteria for our study, right? And then after that, we really don't have to worry about this question anymore. This was just our screener question, and we could end up deleting it. Um, so the second thing we need to do is to make new variable names. So at the moment, um, we have these little big long questions on the top. Are you an active member? These are the questions that we asked. Um, and usually there's a second row that um, kind of says more about the question, right? We're going to delete that row, um, that row of text. And we want to turn these into... Um, a variable name that can be usable, right? So this question, how old are you? We want our variable names to be short. It's easier if they're in caps. Um, they cannot have spaces or special symbols like question marks. Um, you can do an under slash. That usually works okay. Um, but it, they have to be under eight characters. So um, age of respondent, right? How long have you been involved in roller derby? We could do length involve. Right, so you're going to be using a lot of like short talk. You want to be keeping track. Maybe print out a version of your survey and write down what these codes are. Right, this will help you figure out what the one, the two, and the three stand for. So the fifth, that's the next thing we have to do is we need to go through, and the entire front top row should be variable names like this. We have to uh, delete the second row of Excel text. I already did this on this particular data set um, when I processed it years ago. Um, but usually there's a second row of text. We just need to delete the whole thing. We need to make decisions about some of our race variables and other multiple choice open answer variables. So if we look at this one, um, what it does in SPSS is when people answered, what is your race? And this column is everyone who answered African American which is mm, two people, right? Um, three people, not a lot of people. Um, this column, I, I'm guessing, is um, Caucasian. This one, I think, is Hispanic or Latina. Um, and if we were going to be doing like a regression, it would make sense to keep these as sort of separate variables. But what we may want to do, especially since we have such a small data set, is to go through and sort of recode. Usually I'm going to create a new column. I'm going to call it race, maybe race comp, race composite, which means I'm compositing a bunch of different variables. And I might go through and like one of the most common responses is, Anglo, right? So I might go through and just be like, okay, one means they're white. This is someone who identified as a um, Native American. Um, 
So I'm, I'm going to create this sort of a new typology in which there are four now. Um, three is Hispanic Latino. So I'm going to give them all twos. You can also keep these the same numbers if it's easiest, right? It's a much easier way. You can just sort of add these columns together and you end up with the thing. You just need to go through and figure out what you're going to do about people who answered more than one. And in this survey, that's not really so much an issue. What's most common is that you get someone who says, particularly in San Antonio, they say they're Hispanic and they're white. What you can do is you can create a separate category for those folks, particularly there's a couple of them. You can also, um, in the category Hispanic, have it be, in this case, Latino or Latino and white, right? Um, Um, or Latino may or may not identify as white as well. Um, whereas that, and then you can really say, like, for the people who identify as white, that they're all, not just white, but they're Anglo, they are not Hispanic. Um, so you need to kind of go through and figure out, okay, how can I sort of combine these folks into, like, one variable? You have to make some choices. You might make a category, like, multiracial. Um, you might um, kind of focus in on the realistic aspect that... If you have a racial group that only has one or two people in it, you're not going to be able to use it. So you might end up with an other category that includes people who are multiracial or, or say, Native American, you know, kind of involved in this in this study. So you need to go through and kind of figure that out. Some of the other um, kind of open answer questions, like what city do you live in? And we could easily go through and recode this, right? It's like Austin, Austin, San Antonio, San Antonio. Like we could make a new variable that is like city, right? Where one means Austin. I don't know where Texas City is. I'd have to look that up. You know, and two means San Antonio. And you could decide what to do about outlying areas, right? Um, and then figure out whether or not they're kind of in the same city or a nearby city, right? So we can recode this as in the same city or like zero means they're nearby. So you need to kind of make some choices. And when you make these, like especially if you're going to go through the effort of recoding this, you want to make sure it's a variable you think you might actually use, right? Sometimes we ask things and we think, I don't really know if I'm actually going to need to use this. You can always recode it in SPSS as well by doing almost the exact same thing, making a new variable and then kind of going through and hand um, recoding it. Some of the other multiple choice variables in here um, are things like, um, why did you choose to get involved in roller derby? And people answered a lot of different um, possibilities, like they had friends involved and, and whatnot. Um, and these we probably want to keep the same. These are these are different responses, right? They like the outfit, the physicality of the sport, and so on. Um, for those. Um, SPSS, we need to sort of fill in those empty categories with zeros, right? So if you see like SPSS here, it like doesn't, um, it just has threes and fours and has nothing for people who didn't answer that question. If you go up to find and select, you can go to replace and you can replace any blank spots with zeros. You shouldn't do this for your whole data set because there's some maybe places where that blank place means they didn't answer the question, right? Um, but in this case, it'll replace all within whatever you select, right? So if there's a variable that you really want to do that for, you can just select that column and you can do find and replace. The final thing you do is you're going to bring it into SPSS. So I'm going to show you how to do that with a smaller version of this data set. So I took out a little bit, you know, things and the variable names should be very clean like this, right? Most of the things should be filled in with zeros and 99s and, and whatever else. What you're going to do is you're going to open SPSS. And we did this in workshops. So students sometimes forget that you can go back and forth between SPSS and Excel. Um, you can actually resave an SPS data set as an Excel spreadsheet. Um, if you want to work on it in Excel, or if you want to share it with somebody who only has Excel, and you can take an Excel spreadsheet and bring it into SPSS. So we did this for a corporal punishment data set in class um, a few weeks ago. So SPSS is taking its sweet and precious time opening. Um, but what we're going to be doing is we're going to tell SPSS to open some data, just like we do with regular data sets, right? But 
we need to tell it, this is the one trick that I'm finding it on the desktop. Right? We need to tell it that instead of looking for an SPSS data set, you can find it in Excel instead. And there's all sorts of different versions and types of SPSS data sets you can open, including portable files, which you can use to, to change data sets and other statistical software into a portable file and bring it into something like microcase. Um, so we're going to collect, click Excel, and there it is. There's mini data set. We're going to click open. Sometimes it takes SPSS a few minutes. We, we do want it to read the variable names from the first row of data. And what it will do is it will import our variable names as names over here, right? We need to go through and fill in the labels. So that might be copying and pasting the question from your survey. That's a really good way of doing that. If you notice, it doesn't give us any of the values, right? But if we look over here, here's our data. It looks just like our Express spreadsheet. So the final step is going through and filling in this information, the label and the values. So being like length, um, you know, for this one, friends, um, it being a reason, like the label is always yes, I mean, it is a reason, and no, it's not. And there were a whole bunch of questions asked like this, right? And what's great is if you just fill out one of those, you can actually copy and paste it. Um, down for the other values, right? So if you have a lot of repetitive questions about agreeing or disagreeing or being neutral, or being comfortable or uncomfortable, all you have to do is fill in one of those values and you can copy and paste it for the rest of the similar questions. Okay.